So what today's task will be about will be taking what we've written in the blog and talking about concrete steps of optimizing those posts. Because we've been learning about WordPress, we've been learning about marketing, we've been learning about blogging, and part of all of that, of course, we need to then optimize our site to, to get found. And all together, it will help you. So here's just another piece of the puzzle. So I've got this site that I've been working on. You can, you can look at it if you'd like yourself, but I'll show it up here. It's victorsart.info. And I'm using here just the default WordPress 2015 theme. I customize the colors a little bit. I've got something on the home screen. I'm going to probably change it at some point, maybe a slideshow. And on the home page, as I was looking at everyone's websites, uh, you've been doing pretty well on it. Uh, also, look at my website as an example. If you have uh, if you have questions for a few of you, I, I subtracted a point or two on your homework for a couple of reasons. One is that, for example, your home page uh, was too skimpy uh, in that it doesn't have enough uh, content, or what might have happened was you didn't have set up like we talked about before about having a home page page and a blog page and a couple of people I noticed that if you went to the blog for example nothing of the blog actually showed up so that might be that you didn't change your setting in WordPress to use the blog page as a blog page and the home page as a home page so if that doesn't quite make sense, see me during the, the lab, but, and, and, I'll, and I'll reiterate it. Um, also remember, it was uh, an assignment to separate within a few days. It wasn't that, this, that one blog or the two blog posts in one day should have been separated. And obviously, here's a, here's a, a hint. You know, I'll tell you now after it's been assigned. But you could have, even if you were writing them both on the same day, remember WordPress has the ability to future post and to back post. So you could have set it also for that this post was actually posted two days ago, even if you wrote it today. And you could have set the post, this post was written two days from now, even if you created it today. So for future reference, you can always alter the dates of your posts. Uh, but integrity is very important, yes. So um, what I'm going to be talking about uh, in my example site for, for here, uh, notice I've got this site, it's victorsart.info, what's it about? In my particular theme, the default 2015 theme, which a lot of you might be using, if you, if you don't use that one, that's fine, any theme, any theme you like is fine. But in my particular theme, there's a little spot for a tagline, and I wrote here, the place to buy Victor's art. So if your site doesn't quite make sense with some sort of uh, interesting name, you definitely want to put in the tagline what your site is about, as I did there. I've got a menu that shows up home, about, and blog. And notice I've also got a drop-down menu under about where people can contact. That's just purely aesthetic. I could have put it home, about, contact, blog. What I chose to do was to put contact inside of about. That's fine. There's no positive or negative about that. I just wanted it that way for the drop-down menu. This particular theme also has the ability to add social media links, uh, kind of in a different way than I've seen other themes, but it works just fine. And so here, if people want to check out my Instagram, there's a link there. I, they click it, and then it pops up to show my Instagram. And then they can like my photos there. It's also got uh, my Flickr or my Google Plus. So I've got the extra social media, not just the website. I'll be talking about it as time goes on, but I'm also going to be teaching next semester, most likely, as I usually do, CIS 250, 255 which is a social media class. In there, we learn, fo we focus a lot on all the big social networks. We talk about Google+, we talk about Twitter again and some more, we talk about Facebook, Pinterest, etc., 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 so more social networks, because that's another aspect of being online nowadays. It's not just what's on your website, 
but it's what are you also doing on, on social media. So in my site, I've got links to some of my social media sites. And this comes from the particular theme. If your theme doesn't show off your social media links, there's a few uh, plugins that we can that we can look at. In the site, then I've got a uh, an about page. So a little bit about I chose to write it like this. I answered the classic questions about who, what, why, when, and how, and all of that. I answered those in my about page. So if you don't quite know what to write in the about page, that's what I you know I kind of thought about that. I'll just answer those five questions, those f classic five questions, with a sentence. And that's fine. People will get an idea of what this site is about. I've got a contact form here under the contact page, so just a simple contact form for people to send me uh, a contact. This one is slightly different than the one that's built into WordPress, and I'll show it to you once I log in. It's a contact form that I like called Contact Form 7. So I'll mention it when I log into my site uh, because it also has the ability to do captchas. So that way I can avoid a little bit of the spam so that these spam bots don't send me these emails. They have to type in the code first before it sends it. And then I've got the blog, which is what's something that you needed. So the way the reason the way I'm using my blog is, well, my whole site is I'm going to be eventually selling my original artwork. Uh, so my original sketches and, and all of that. And what I want to do in the blog is write about, not each, because I'm selling like 300 of them or something, uh, I'm going to write uh, I'm gonna write about many of them, like about them. So for example, this one here, which I published on May 1st. Actually, I wrote it today, but I backdated it, um, this, this particular post. Uh, and I have the continue reading right here. I don't recall, and, and, it w and it didn't really affect your grade, but I don't recall people using this trick here in your blogs. You'll have to remind me if you did, but I've got a little snippet of the blog post and then read more. Uh, like I said, I don't remember if, if you guys did it, and if you didn't, that's fine, but I'll remind you how to do it when I log in. So there's a, there's a snippet. People can then click continue reading and then it shows the whole blog post itself, there's the drawing, and then my 100 or 200 words. And then a spot for people to, to reply. So what we're going to do is, uh, most of you that did the assignment of the blog, great, we're going to build upon it, we're going to uh, look at optimizing the post, because maybe you wrote something really good, maybe you had a nice cool picture and that sort of thing but we also then want to look at the uh, the aspect of optimizing it so when people search they can find your blog post they can find your content so you should go ahead and log in to your site log into your WordPress site you log into your site and let me show you what well, we'll do it in a moment the, the read more feature uh, what I want to do is just confirm that we all have the plugin I'm going to talk about to optimize our site for SEO now a caveat here is that this plugin only works on a WordPress website that is on GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, that it's not on WordPress.com because unfortunately WordPress.com doesn't let you use plugins as I've mentioned before. So if you don't have your site on, Word, on your own GoDaddy, uh, you won't be able to do this. Just take notes and follow along and when you do get your site you'll be able to do this. But to confirm, you should be logged in and then we'll go here on the left side to plugins 
and you can look at the installed plugins. Let's just go to your plugins screen. And I think we might have done it a while ago, but if not, you can raise your hand here. How many of you installed the WordPress SEO plugin? Did I, did I talk about that in this class? Rowena, you have it? So I, I talked about it in this class? Okay, so if you don't have it, we want to install this. Uh, at the top, we've got the button under plugins there, add new. So under the plugins, add new, if you don't have this, and I will search for the plugin WordPress SEO. <coughs> That should give you the WordPress SEO by Yoast. It comes from Team Yoast. It's got more than a million installations, a thousand ratings, and so forth. So I did talk about installing it before. If you haven't done so yet, you want to install it, and you want to activate it. So let's take a moment to do that. If you need any help, call me over, because we're going to use this plugin uh, extensively today. If your if your website is on WordPress.com, unfortunately, you won't have it. All right. So, what the WordPress SEO plugin? What it does is it gives you these extra fields, these extra features to optimize your your posts or every aspect of your site actually a post or a page and then it gives you this little rating um, this color-coded rating to tell you uh, red this page is not optimized well or green this page is optimized really well or in the middle there's a yellow and there's an orange and there's also gray which is you have not optimized your your page yet so that's what the plugin activates. And because we should have some posts, we'll be able to use this. So from your menu over there, uh, go to your posts, go to all posts. So my screen's a little cramped here, but uh, this is what I've got. I've got my uh, a column of the name of the post and who wrote it, the author, categories. You don't have to worry about categories or tags yet. No comments, feature, don't worry. And I've got here a column of SEO, SEO title, meta description, focus keyword. And on the SEO column, I've got these little gray circles. These mean that I have not optimized or I have not attempted to optimize the posts yet. And the way this will work is we're going to use this plugin to to write the meta description and a and use a focus keyword so that our little dot there goes from red to orange to yellow to green. Ideally we want the green dot, the yellow dot is good. The orange dot is not so good, and then the red dot is bad. The gray dot is weak, means we haven't done anything yet. So, for example, I've got this blog post. I'm going to select to edit the post, and when I go into actually editing the post, it'll give me the ability to uh, really target my, my settings here. So I'm going to scroll down right here. You should see this little area called WordPress SEO by Yoast and that's what the plugin is is activating. So under this WordPress SEO by Yoast category 
It's got a few tabs, general, page analysis, advanced, and social. This is very cool, very powerful, because it gives you a preview of what that particular page will look like when someone searches. So it's taking pieces of what I wrote and placing it in the snippet. So if my if someone Googled me or searched me on Bing and found that, that's how it would look. And it looks okay. It's got the name of my website and it's got the name of the blog post, in that case Spectre, and then it's got a little snippet of what I wrote. Although notice it's kind of running together here, this sentence with that sentence. So by default, this is what the search engines will do. It will just find some content on your page, usually the first sentence or two, and show it in a search result. And sometimes you'll get a good result and sometimes not. So this plugin will help us control that because I've got here focus keyword, I'll talk about that in a moment, and it's got SEO title and meta description. So what appears on this line here is what I can write in the SEO title. So I can write anything here, you know, buy this art. See, it's showing you uh, a preview. That's what's going to show up on the search results. Obviously, I'm not going to write that, but I'm showing you that whatever I write there will show up there. If I don't write anything there, it'll take the title of the blog post and the name of your website, which oftentimes is just fine. Uh, so in my case, maybe I won't change the title. I like how it's showing it. But maybe in the About page, or the Contact page actually, on the Contact page I might want to reword that a little bit like Contact Me for Prices. I'll look at that later. But what I do want to edit is the meta description. I, I don't like how it's running it together, and it's also getting cut off. If I zoom out here, right here, it's writing a sentence, and then it gets cut off. It just ends. I want it to actually have a complete thought, so I can write my own description here, and it tells me how much space I have to write there, 156 characters before it gets cut off. So I'm going to write a variation of what that description is there. obviously whatever your post is about, you have 156 characters to convey to people when they search what that particular post is about. Uh, so here I'm writing a sentence. And now the preview shows the description that appears below the, this, the search result. I want to save that, or I want to update that. This is something that wouldn't appear to regular people on my site. It would appear if people searched for uh, for for something and found my page and what that something that they would be searching for is what I would put in the focus keyword now it doesn't have to literally be one word it can be it can be a phrase so I have to think about in terms what would I want to in a sense classify this post as 
in order for people to find it. So I'm thinking maybe like, uh, let's say ghost drawing. It sort of looks like a ghost, but let's say people were, were searching for drawings of ghosts, so someone might type ghost drawing. And as I'm writing, it's going to pop up with suggestions of, of what people might be searching for on Google or, or on Bing. So here I've got ghost drawing, ghost drawing images, ghost drawing Tumblr, ghost drawings Halloween, ghost drawing picture, ghost drawing on mirror. I'm just going to select ghost drawing. Once I've selected a keyword, then it can analyze my page. That's the point of this plugin. Not only can we write these different, uh, these different details of a post to help our SEO, but the plugin will really tell you how well you're doing. So I'm going to put in that keyword, ghost drawing. And I'm going to save it, or update it, because it'll then fully analyze my page. And notice what, what changed over here. My SEO, it went from NA, the, the gray one, which was it's, it, it hasn't been applied yet. And now it's changed to the orange one, which, which is poor. I have poor SEO at the moment. What does that mean? Well, scrolling down here, it's telling me, for example, this focus keyword. Your focus keyword was found in none of these. If I'm trying to be found, if people are going to Google ghost drawing, I'm not using that keyword enough. That's what it's telling me. It's not in the heading, it's not in the page title, it's not in the address, it's not in the content or the meta description. So the more of these that I put it into, the better. The caveat, though, is that you can over-optimize, unfortunately. Um, the search engines will think you're spamming, actually, if you apply your keyword to all of these. If you apply it to a couple, you'll, you'll be good, as well as, under page analysis here, to try to accomplish some of these tasks. Under page analysis, it's telling me, for example, there are 157 words contained in the body. This is below the 300 word recommended minimum. Add more useful content. All right, so that's telling me, write 300 words at least. I'm halfway there. The keyword ghost drawing does not appear in the page title. The meta description has been specified, but it doesn't contain the keyword. The keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph of the copy. You have not used your keyword in the subheading, like in H1 or H2. Keyword density is zero. It wasn't used at all, really. So it's giving me all of these bullet points to accomplish. And unfortunately, it's not the most beneficial to get all of these to turn green. A few years ago it would have been. A few years ago when the search engines had different rules, they would want you to use your keyword as much as you could. And now I can't tell you, make sure you use it three times or seven times. I can't tell you, make sure you've got seven green dots. It really depends on a variety of factors, but it is a good guide this plugin to tell you in general to go from red up to green. So I'm going to see here. I did get a green here. Never use the focus keyword. Very good. The copy or the text scores 77.2 in the flesh reading e ease test, which is considered fairly easy to read. So if you're using a lot of complicated words, that'll uh, decrease your score, I believe, and then it'll make it harder for people to read, and then they, they won't like the post. Let's see, the meta description is under 120 characters, however, up to 156 characters are available. The available space is shorter than the usual 155. The page title contains 27 characters, which is less than the recommended minimum of 40. So it's just giving me this advice of how I could further write my post a little better. So I'm going to use that focus keyword of ghost drawing in my description. It's one of the most powerful places where you can actually put it. 
it's saying, well, put it maybe in the heading, in the title, etc., but definitely in the description, I would say. So how can I incorporate the word ghost drawing in my description here? I could say, I made this ghost drawing in December. Update that. This is saying I've used it in the meta description. I still need to accomplish a few more tasks. I'm still under the poor range. I would definitely want to get out of that. I'm going to use it also in the content. So I'm going to use the keyword ghost drawing somewhere in the actual content here. Question. Yes, sir. Um, to, to activate it, I press the check button. For, for yeah, it, whatever plugin you have, you're going to be uh, installing it and then activating it. So I'm going to incorporate the keyword within the content itself. Let's see how that improves things. So I've got I've got it showing up here under content and meta description. So again, I'm I'm you're going to resist the temptation to include your keyword on all of these because sometimes it's overkill. For example, uh, it wouldn't quite make sense in my case to use it on the page title. The page title of my of this particular blog post is Spectre. I'm not going to rewrite the title of that blog just to fit the keyword because the title of that work is Spectre. I'm not going to rename that that drawing to be called Ghost Drawing. So I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about changing the title. Um, the title is related to the address, the URL. So again, I'm not going to change the address to adhere to that keyword just because it's my keyword. My article heading, in my case, also wouldn't work. I'm using a heading right here, a ghastly figure. Maybe I could put it there, a ghost drawing, but I think then it gets too generic. So I'm not going to worry about adding the keyword to those other ones that it's recommending here, but I am going to look at some of these other recommendations. So again, I'm going to skip. Uh, I'm going to skip it for that one, skip it for that one. The image on this page do not have alt tags containing your keyword. Um, that one I might do because the alt tags, the alt text, um, are, are is text that is uh, visible to those that have a screen reader. Let's see, the page title contains 27 characters, which is less than the recommended minimum. Um, I might work on that one. No outbound links appear in this page. Consider adding some as appropriate. Okay, that's a good one. That one is telling me right now your blog post is a dead end. People come to read it and then they stay there. Let me load it up like this. Someone comes to read it And that's it. There's there's no links within the text itself. So this is recommending you should have at least one link, an outbound link, a link going someplace else. So what I'm going to do is think about I want to add a link somewhere in my text, and I have a variety of things that I could do. I could link from my blog post to another blog post, or I could link to some other website. Instead, I'm going to link to another website, and then I have to decide there. 
what kind of website am I going to link to? I could link to the Wikipedia article about ghosts. That, would, that might be useful. But maybe more useful is that I'm linking my blog to someone else's blog. Someone else's blog that relates to, to ghosts or the paranormal or drawing or art or graphic design or something. So my post should link to someone else's post, preferably a blog, that is related in the hopes that if I link to someone else's website then they might link back to my website and that's going to help my SEO. Google and Bing are going to see other people's websites are linking to his website. His website must be a good website because why else would those other websites link to you? They relate. I'm gonna take a quick detour here. I'm gonna look for I'm just gonna type ghost drawing Get pictures of ghost drawings, of course. Videos. Three ways to draw a ghost. How to draw ghosts. Tutorial. How to draw ghosts. Art for Kids Hub. Hmm. That sounds like a blog. It's it's about my topic. I'm gonna go check it out. Pretty scary ghost. What materials? Video. Step by step. So I think I'll do I'll link to this one. This particular um, post relates to what my post is about. What's even better about it is that people are actually commenting on it. It shows that people care about that post. So I could get a link back from that post and maybe some of that traffic from those people. So I'm gonna basically this link uh, of this post I you can just copy that address and back on my post I just have to decide where within my text I'll have that link So just about anything I can link, I can make a link. So I am going to make the word cartoony here a link over to their blog post. So here in WordPress I can uh, select uh, the text, click the little link icon, that chain, paste in that link, and remember to turn on the option open link in a new window. I want that link, but I don't want people to go off to someone else's website and then forget about mine. I want them to go to their website, check what's there, whatever, close that link, and then they're still on my site. And that works with open link in a new window or tab. So I'm going to add that link. Update. Look at that, it went up a level. It's no longer under poor. It's on OK. It's on yellow. There's one more level, a green one. I think it's called good or great or something. But if you can get your posts to the OK level, that's much better than they are currently, which is most likely gray, which means not optimized at all. And maybe as you start to optimize, they'll be under poor. Well, OK is better than poor. So notice the way I did it with this plugin. I chose a keyword. I applied the keyword a few, in a few places. In the actual content is one of the important places. In the description is another one. As appropriate, you can add it to these three ones, but I didn't. That's fine. I did go over to the page analysis tab, and then now I've got right here one outbound link, green. Perfect. The keywords appear in the first paragraph of the copy. Okay, the meta description contains the primary keyword, which is which is this right here, meta description. It's telling me I could write a little bit more in my description. 
If I can get closer to 156 characters, that would be even better. But I've reached the OK level, so I'm happy with that. Any questions so far? This plugin is free, you just need to find it, install it, activate it, and like I'm saying, it gives you this new feature. If I go back to the All Posts screen, now at a glance I can see these are my I've got three blog posts and I can see at a glance there's the ones that are yellow there's the ones that are gray that I haven't worked on yet uh, these are the ones that are red that I haven't that are, have poor optimization and so forth So as I said, not only does this plugin work on your on your posts, but it also works on your pages and, and other things that we'll look at. But I'm using the general tab, page analysis tab, under the advanced tag. You really don't have to worry about this part because it's advanced. And then under social, this is useful. You can you can set this up so that if someone shares your post on Facebook, this is what will appear for Facebook. Facebook will try to, to grab a picture and some text straight out of your post. That's the default. But maybe it grabs the wrong picture. Maybe you've got five pictures. And if someone shares your post on their Facebook, it grabs the wrong picture. Or maybe you want specific picture or specific text to be shared on Facebook. So that's where I can set that. Anyone that uh, shares my post or my page to Facebook will have this customized stuff. It says if you don't want to use the your current post title, you can set it here. If you don't want to use the meta description you currently have, you can also set that. And if you want a specific image instead of the, instead of the first image, you can put it. I'm fine with, with what it's going to grab, but if I wanted to change it, I could. I'll look at something else briefly, and then we'll take a break. Uh, I'll go look at the pages, because I can do that under pages as well, and I should do that under pages. I'm looking at pages, and notice I have not attempted to optimize my about page my contact page, my home page. That's one of the most important ones to optimize because that's that could be the number one page that shows up when people search. So on my home page right here, my front page, same sort of thing. I go to edit. This is the picture and the text that I wrote. It's not been optimized yet. So I know I want, when people search, I want to be found for original artwork. So if I'm going to use that term, original artwork, now it's up to me to see how I can use that term organically within my post. And organically means something that makes sense. You just don't want to get all greens just to get all greens. You want to get enough of them to get to OK, because then it, it's, it backfires against you eventually, that it um, will hurt your SEO if you overuse it. So I'm going to write here, meta description for my site. Purchase original artwork from Victor Campos. Find the perfect pencil or pen drawings. And own a one-of-a-kind piece. So 
So this is what it's look like, looking like if people were searching for original artwork. If my page came up on the search results, it would look like that. My art for you, pictures art, the address, and then the description I just wrote with one of those keywords. So now I have to make sure, again, same strategy, I'm going to try to incorporate the, the keyword original artwork within that post. Or, I'm sorry, that page. So I think I can do it right here instead of just original art, original artwork. And so I would go in into the page analysis and try to get a couple of these. Um, in this case, it wouldn't really work to do the outbound link. I don't want people to go right away as soon as they come to my homepage to someone else's website. I still want them on my site. What else could I do here? Write more description. I've only got 60 words on the homepage. Maybe write a little bit more. The image is not using it, so I think in that case I will put it. Um, this particular image, if I edit it, right now the alt text is outlandish wizard, but I, I put here uh, original artwork outlandish wizard. So now that's going to have the keyword, and I'll get one more green. So I think I'll focus on getting a, writing a few more words into the description. I want to try to get that one green. So right now I have 39 characters left. So what else here? Purchase original artwork from Victor Campos. Find the perfect pencil or pen drawings and own a one-of-a-kind piece. Read the blog. Read the blog to find out about Read the blog to learn more about each. And that's gone up to OK. So I've optimized the home page. So what we'll do now then is we'll take a break and you want to try this. You want to use that SEO plugin, the WordPress SEO plugin from Yoast uh, to kind of get a feel about how this works. Uh, so you can think about optimizing your home page definitely at some point, uh, blog posts and so forth. So uh, let's take a break and when we come back we'll look at some more some more things. So at 6.22, we'll be back at 6.32.
Anyways, you won.